Hello, this is Stuart Clark, Developer Advocate for Cisco DevNet. This is a technical overview session and testing of Automation Exchange. We're going to walk over what you can do with Automation Exchange, and then we're going to look at a use case and how you can apply this in your workflows. Let's get started. Companies in most industries are under pressure to respond to increasingly connected consumers with intelligent and great experiences. It goes without saying that smart businesses align their strategies with consumers and employees, changing their habits and needs. But what is the right way to make these needs and expectations? Cisco Automation Exchange recognises the trend and we have a strategy to capitalise on the big shift our customers and partners are making today. Automation Exchange is a community-based developer centre where our networkers and developers alike can learn to walk, run and fly with network automation using Cisco's products and the full capabilities of the new network. A typical life cycle here is that there will always be a feedback loop that is traditionally done with manually through human intervention. With network automation, the objective is to automate the entire feedback loop to enable quicker reaction to the network events and a faster determination on actions to perform on the network. With Automation Exchange, we have use cases that can be arranged into automation and configuration lifestyle managements. The automation covers the entire network lifecycle of Cisco offerings to help increase the investment and protection, optimize network operations, support mitigation and operations, and to strengthen the automation expertise. Let's now look at a use case from the run methodology. This is our typical workflow for when our customers are experienced or have been experiencing an issue. First, they will open a support ticket. This is raised with our team and we are tasked for investigating and fixing the issue. Once the issue is known, our team can look into implementing the fix by changing the network policy within our network. Once we have confirmed this is fixed, we can then move to the resolution where the service is fully restored. Now let's look at our network automation exchange to see this use case in action. The first thing we need to do is navigate over to automation exchange. We do this by going to developer.cisco.com forward slash network hyphen automation. We then browse down to the view all use cases tab. Once we click on this, it opens up a secondary tab for us and we're able to set our defined variables to find the use case that we want to help solve our issue. In this example, I'm going to select run and on the far right hand side under product, I'm going to select SD1. In our example, our customer is using SD1 to manage all of their edge devices. This filters all of the use cases down into the two into examples that might be a possible solution for us to help us with our packet loss issue. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we can see this last installment, which has been added to the use cases. The vManage APIs for application aware routing policies. This influences the flow of data traffic and routing information among the Cisco VH devices in our overlay network. This sounds like this use case could be of great help to us. Let's click onto this and expand this and look at this in more detail. As we expand on this, we can look at some of the details of this particular use case. This use case is either designed for campus and branch or SP, meaning service provider. On the right hand side, we can see the Cisco product use of SD1, the scenario, which is automation at scale, the life cycle here, which is day two, which is optimize, and then the stage. As we mentioned before, this is a run methodology where we're going to set a policy and access across our entire network. Also in this little box, there is see the code on code exchange and also a DevNet sandbox link. We'll click on these and then we'll come back to these to have a look at these just in a second. We can use Automation Exchange to really see if this use case is the one for us and see if this is going to help us with our issue. Here, if we read the brief description here, the policy influences the flow of data traffic and routing information among Cisco vEdge devices in an overlay network. In the description below, 
we can see the application aware policy is configured in vManage as a centralized data policy that maps a service and site application to a specific SLA requirement. There's a little bit further information down in here where we can identify We've got the application SLA requirements and then the application aware policy. Here there is even a diagram which shows our, our use case and how this can be leveraged. Underneath of this you'll see a one, two, three step approach where we can retrieve the existing policy defining the, the using the API endpoint. So the step two by using the affected master template IDs for the V smart devices and then step three which would be our validation of the process once we've enabled this. This example looks like a good fit. And this use case looks like it's going to help solve us with our packet loss that we were seeing before in the ticket that was raised by our customer or end user. The first thing that we can do here is navigate over to Code Exchange. Code Exchange will give us the full details of how to get the code from Git. It will also tell us of any, any requirements that we will need to run this code. For example, this code runs in Python 3.7. There is a detailed install and setup here where it walks us through installing the code, moving into the directory, and then setting up a virtual environment to run the code in. It then instructs us that there is a YAML file to use, and the YAML file will define all of our SD WAN sandbox details in this case. So what we can do here is we can set the host, the port, the username and the password, and these variables can change. In this example, we're using this against the DevNet um, SD-WAN sandbox. However, if you wanted to test this into your own environment, you could just update the YAML file with your vManaged host, port, username and password. Once you've done that, you're, you're free then to run the code. By running the Python script, it gives us the possible input values for the new transport color, and these are all listed below. Another example is given, even taking one of the color policies and then implementing this. Finally, we see a sample output of what this should look like. If we move over into the sandbox, we could actually fully test this code. This gives us tremendous value. Not everybody has a dev environment to test their code, and some people are a little bit scared of testing their production code on their production co network just in case they cause other issues. So the sandboxes give us great value where we can test our code safely and test a use case without having any other consequences and causing other outages or customer or user issues. After we'd cloned the code and navigated into the sandbox, we would simply click reserve. This would bring us up the details for the sandbox and allow us to reserve this sandbox for a number of days to test this code. Once we were happy that this code was working and would solve our issue, we could then modify that code and use this in our production network, thus solving the issue. Thank you for joining me for this session. I hope you enjoy the rest of all of the sessions we've got lined up for you at DevNet Create this year.